Please join me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Psalm 111, which we heard David read today, has long been read in the tradition that the person who wrote this psalm was someone who lived through, perhaps was even born into, the exodus from Egypt and saw Israel's return to Jerusalem. This psalm then was written by someone who quite literally had a mountaintop experience. Someone who stood on a mountain and watched God return a community to safety and to home. Someone who had seen God perform a miracle. Have you seen God perform a miracle? I think you have. I think you wouldn't be here if you hadn't. Now before you turn off the YouTube and feel left out, I'm not talking about waters parting or water into wine. But I bet that you have seen things that made you feel small in the most profound of ways. There are things that you have experienced that you can't quite find the words for, that you can't quite explain. Things that were beautiful or wondrous or at the very limit of language the way the music took hold of you that one night in college. And you got the sense that everyone at that party was infinite and that you were too. The way your mom seemed like she was talking to your father who had died years ago, right before she passed and you still don't know how to talk about it with people who weren't there. Perhaps you've had your own mountaintop experience, that time where the sun struck the snow as it was setting, and the landscape and the whole world below looked like it was glowing from the inside out. These are the moments Moments when our attention is fully captured and we are suddenly open to something greater, something deeper than the little slice of time we trundle around in. Moments where we catch a glimpse just for a second of eternity. When the psalmist proclaims the fear of the Lord, or the reverence of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom, this, I think, is what they mean. But it is only that. It is only the beginning. For in order to give thanks to the Lord with our whole hearts, not just on the mountaintop, but also in the grocery store, on our commute, in the midst of the daily minutia of our lives, we must, in fact, as the psalm says, practice it. This is the fourth week of our Guiding Word sermon series. Over the past month, we have thought together about who God is calling us to be in this year ahead. We have hopefully by now chosen a word that symbolizes that intent. And now 
last week and this week, we are talking about how to utilize our word to focus our intention and help us pay attention to the call from God. Last week, we spoke about strategies to remind ourselves of our words, playlists or visual clues, sharing your experience with others in this community. This week, we are talking about how to utilize our word and help create the change we are seeking. And the way that we will do that in this year ahead is through incorporating our word into our spiritual practices. Spiritual practices are how we integrate our mountaintop experiences into our lived lives. They are how we make those moments matter, how we allow them to change us, to shape us, to lead us to deeper truths and to a better world. Now, when I say spiritual practices, I know some of you have visions of monks and hours on your knees, but spiritual practices do not have to be intense. For years, my favorite spiritual practice was turning down my Spotify during commercials and saying a prayer. And over time, that spiritual practice had a great impact on my walk with God. Journaling, running, dancing, prayer in many forms, all of these are spiritual practices. They are the things that we intentionally put into our lives that help us focus on God and focus on our best selves. And I bet that if you think about it, you may already have some. And so one of the things that we are invited to do through this one word, this guiding word project, is to think about what spiritual practices we already have, what spiritual practices we want to take up, and how our one word can incorporate itself into them. And so that is exactly what we are going to do together now. We are going to take a second we are going to think about what spiritual practices we have and what spiritual practices God might be calling us to take up in the year ahead. And we are going to think about how our word can help us with that project. If you come up blank and you need help thinking about it, you want to take up some spiritual practices, but you're stuck, I know a minister you can call. But let's see where we get when we pause this stream and we think about it together. We'll meet back here for prayer soon. God, be with us this week as we work to turn our attention to you, as we work to integrate the moments in which we glimpse you, so that we might focus ever more on the good and the beautiful and the hopeful and reflect it back out into the world. Work upon our hearts and lives, Lord. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. Lord God, we have never known a time when there was total peace, when everyone in our lives was fully happy and fully healthy. And yet, you have put a call upon our hearts something within us that rebels against injustice, against pain, against death, against inequality. You have put upon our hearts the knowledge that there is a better world that is both possible and that is to come. And so we nurture that dissatisfaction, that holy yearning by lifting up to you all of the places in our lives where we see pain or injustice or grief by putting ourselves in the gap and saying, oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray this morning for all those on our prayer list, for those who are in pain, for those who are in grief, for those who received bad news. We pray for those who are lonely. And we pray for those who bear the heavy burden of responsibility, especially in this time. We pray for our leaders, Lord, for our doctors and our essential workers. We pray with people waiting for the vaccine. We know that you join us in these prayers and that your spirit is working in that gap between what is and what should be. And we pray to prayers of joy, knowing that you magnify our joy and that our joy is magnified in community. We pray for those who had birthdays. We pray with those who have received their first or even their second vaccine. We pray with those who are rejoicing over being able to connect in new ways with grandchildren. We pray with those who are finding strength within themselves and joy within themselves more than they even could have expected. And we pray, Lord, with all of those things that are not on our prayer list, but are certainly in our hearts. We pray, even as your scriptures say, with the moanings and rumblings of our hearts, knowing that you hear all of our prayers, even those that we don't know how to put into words yet. And we thank you for giving those us those words that your son Christ gave to us, that we can wrap all of our prayers and hopes into, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The work of this place is the work of hope the work of community, work that starts as small as our own hearts or our little church in Falmouth, Maine, but has the potential to reshape the world more in the image of God's kingdom. One of the ways you can help us put that light of hope and community out into the world is by giving a little of your treasure. You can do that by clicking on the electronic giving link, sending us a check, 
dropping something in the church mailbox. Every penny you use, we will utilize for justice, mercy, beauty, and Christ's promise, which more people need to hear. The morning's offering will now be given and received. As you go from this place, may you go loving God so much that you love nothing else too much and fearing God just enough that you need never fear anything else at all. May the blessing of God, God's Son, Jesus Christ, and the mystery of the Holy Spirit encompass and surround you today and all the days of your life. Amen.